Hello everyone. Today we're going to review my training for the Grand Canyon. We're about a month out, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to take a look at the goals I set and how I am moving forward to achieving those goals. All right, so first of all, you can see my bullet journal has been well loved. I've nearly worn off this cover. And you can see my index page here. I've been filling it in with all sorts of uh, page numbers to list I have elsewhere in the journal. Today we're going to revisit my training, which is on page 10. So let's go to page 10. So I, way back at the very beginning, put together these training goals. And so I basically have three goals that I've put together. My overarching goal was to hike 12 miles in one day without getting sore. Why 12 miles? Well, it looks like this is still true. I am going to be in the canyon for five days, and on any one given day, I think the most I will hike is about 12 miles. And so I feel like if I can hike 12 miles without getting sore, then this is probably a good indication that I can make it all five days without too much of an issue. So the other part of the Grand Canyon is elevation gain. When I'm hiking from the river back up to the rim, I'm gonna to have to climb, depending on which trail I take, about 4,785 feet. And that's in one day. Now, right now, I am planning actually on spending my last night at Indian Garden, which is part way up. So it's, um, I only have about two thirds of this left for my last day. And so I, the day before that, I will have climbed about a third of the, the total 4,785 feet. So I'm not as worried about this goal anymore, but as you can see, I have not marked it as completed. I have not actually climbed 4,785 feet in one day. So the, finally, the third goal that I kind of came up with, I, I have these as goal one and two because I think of them as my mini goals to help train me for this more, over, this more overarching goal. And my goal here was to be able to run six miles with no walking and ideally at a 10 minute pace. I did not achieve this at all. I think the best I did was to be able to run three miles with no walking and not even close to the 10 minute pace. Now I have done some intermittent running where I went six plus miles and we'll take a look at that here in a moment. But that was um, intermittent running and intermittent walking. So I can't say that I actually went six miles with no walking on those ones. So as you may recall, I put together this training schedule. The basic idea was once a week I would do stairs, once a week I would do lunges, once a week I would do some sort of easy walk, once a week I would do some sort of cross training. So this typically was some sort of strengthening exercise. Once a week I would do some sort of short run typically, and once a week I would do some sort of long run. And so generally speaking, I did manage to do this. This is only three days here. So what I kind of in my mind did for the seventh day was stretching. I would spend about 10 minutes of stretching. Now, I also would do, particularly before the long run, I should say, briefly after a warm up for the long run, I would do stretching. And I would do a little bit of stretching with the stairs, that much less so. So I did do stretching throughout, probably not as much as I should. So let's see how I did towards achieving my goals. As I said, I did not achieve gold, what I have written down here as number one and number two. And I didn't really achieve this first one at the top either. But with this first one, I did manage to hike 12 miles in one day and the first time I did it, I hiked up an elevation gain of close to 2,400 feet. And 
the next day I ended up going for another hike. And then day after that, I went for another hike. They were shorter hikes. I don't think um, they were more than, say, five miles. And I have to say, while I felt sore, I didn't feel like it limited my ability to do hiking, additional hiking the next several days. So I felt that was a wonderful test of how sore I could be and not have it really be a downer for the trip. So I was pretty pleased. And this was fairly early on in my training. I have been training for a little while. So then I did a second 12 mile hike uh, just a few months ago. And that one is probably less of a good indication. I went further actually. I went about 13.6 miles, I think it was. And the elevation gain on that one was much less. It was around 900 feet of elevation gain. So in that regards, uh, of comparing it to the Grand Canyon, it probably wasn't a great comparison. But again, I was sore afterwards, but I felt like if I had to keep hiking for the next several days, it wasn't a real big issue. I don't think it would have prevented me from continuing on. So I was pretty proud of those milestones towards this goal. Not completely what I wanted. I wanted to be able to do it without getting sore and I did get sore, but not to the point where I couldn't move the next day. My goal stairs training. Well, you know what? I actually recorded this. So let's take a look. Training stairs. So what I put together here just to kind of motivate me was I wrote the elevation gain of enchanted rock and the place I was going to be stairs training I measured the steps and counted the number of stairs for each floor, which generally was the same. And I figured that, and I wrote this a little wonky, so I figured that if I went 10, did 10 floors 3.27 times, so in other words, I did basically 33 floors then that was the equivalent of going up to Enchanted Rock in terms of elevation gain. Now, in reality, Enchanted Rock, you're not just going straight up. So that doesn't take into account the distance. But in terms of elevation gain, that's about the same. So generally speaking, when I've been doing my stairs training, my original plan, just to go back, was to slowly, incrementally increase the number of floors that I was doing until I reached this 4,780 foot elevation gain equivalent. In reality, what I ended up doing is I ended up doing basically the equivalent of Enchanted Rock. I ended up shortening it from 33 flights just down to 30 flights for a lot of these. Um, that wasn't the case early on when I was starting. So you'll see I did the Enchanted Rock several times. One time, this was shortly before my first 12 mile hike, I did manage to do 187 floors. And so I did that because that was the equivalent of Mystic Lake, which is where I ended up doing my first 12 mile hike. So I can show you here, it took me just under two hours to go up and down 187 floors. So this is a good point to point out. What do I mean when I say I did 187 floors? Well, the way this worked is in the building I'm in, the stairs I'm using, I'm doing in increments of 10. That's why I put 10 up here. So I start at the top and I go down 10 flights of stairs and then I come back up 10 flights of stairs. So down 10, up 10, in my mind equals 10 flights of stairs. So when I say 187 floors, I actually went down 187 floors just so I could come back up 187 floors. So if you look at it that way, some people might say I actually did double this, but because I'm thinking of the elevation gain, I wanted to be able to go up 187 floors, but because the building I'm in doesn't have 187 floors, 
I kind of had to go back down to restart. So that's why I ended up doing, in a sense, twice as much work. But the other thing is the Grand Canyon, I'm going to have to go down also. So training wise, that made the most sense to me. So I did not record all my stairs training in the journal. After a while, I decided just to record some of my better times. So my most recent entry was in February, where I managed to go down and up 30 floors, and it took me 15 minutes and 42 seconds. Other than my record of 187 floors, I also did another one where I did about... Actually, is that the same one? No, okay. I also did about 103 floors, and that would be the equivalent of roughly Indian Gardens. And as you can see, that's the only time that I even attempted to do an equivalent stairs climb to one of the places in the Grand Canyon. But I put this over here just to try and motivate me to climb higher or to accomplish these little stepping stones. And I guess it didn't work because I haven't done it yet. Going back to my goal number two, I kept track of a bunch of those running. So here is my running results. So you can see, just to give you an idea of the distances I was going, I was roughly around, and this was my long. So what I wrote down here was my long runs. I did not include any of my short runs here. For my long runs, you can see I was doing about five miles early on. I made it up to six, five miles. There I only did a four mile. There I only did a three mile for my long run. And then over here, uh, you can see this is the first time I did my 12 miles. So that was Mystic Lake, and I indicated I did get sore, but not too bad. And then I did six miles, and then... In December, I decided I needed to ramp it up and try and work up to 12 miles again. Again, just to remind you, when I say I ran six miles, I didn't really run six miles. I did running and walking. So I would run for a while, then walk for a while, then run for a while. This is probably the best pace I got in, a six, uh, in six miles. My best pace was 12 minutes and 33 seconds. So that was my overall average pace for that one. So definitely not the 10 minutes I was aiming for, but based on where I started, let's see here. So like this one, which was a couple months earlier, I was able to do six miles in 14 minutes and 48 seconds. So I was pretty happy that number was going down. And then you can see here I did the six miles and the next week I did seven, then eight, then nine, then I did about 10. And then here is where I did my 13, here I say it's 0.7 miles. This was a hike that I did. And interestingly enough, I forgot about this. I got blisters from that one. So that made me realize that I have to be aware of blisters in the Grand Canyon because when you do it for one day, it's not a big deal, but when you're going to be hiking for five days and you get blisters, ouch, that can really put a damper on your adventure. So my most recent long run that I've done was uh, about a month ago now, a little less than a month ago, and that was, I did seven miles, not at a very good pace, 1636. As you can see, that's a lot slower pace than I did way back in December. But I was going more not as a running pace, but just more as I wanted to get the distances. So overall, I would have to say that I'm pretty happy with my running training. Not ecstatic about it because I clearly didn't get to my goal that I wanted, which was the, the six miles of no walking. And I didn't get to my 12 miles in one day with not being sore, but I did try a couple 12 miles. And as I said, 
it didn't turn out too bad. So there you have it. That's my review of my training for the Grand Canyon and where I'm at at this point. As I said earlier, I'm about a month out from the Grand Canyon. And so I'm going to change up how I'm training at this point. I just don't really have much time now to train, but I am doing a few things to train. And so hopefully I will be able to share that with you at some point here along the way. All right. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye now.